Yeah. Good morning to people in the States and good afternoon to the UK. Awesome. So good afternoon, Cody. Good afternoon, Cody. <laughs> She's still singing. <laughs> she is still singing. Awesome. That's what it's all about. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Richard. Good afternoon, Nancy. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be here today. Well, you're, you're the first guest of a whole day. We yeah. all wrap up Absolutely. Really later, exciting. so Thank you. you are the first one to kick it off. So we're not going to waste any time, Cody. You know. It's my sidekick here, Nancy here. She's uh, going to be with me all day. We're so excited for having uh, you on to be the first one. But Cody, we're just going to start. Tell us a little bit about no, you. Then. Tell us a little bit about your journey <laughs> and we're ready to listen. So yeah. all you. There's a little... You there? So yeah, so I'm 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 originally from Zimbabwe in Southern Africa, and I came from um from Zimbabwe in 2004. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, you're good now. Yeah, it's loud and clear. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Right. So um so yeah so I am originally from Zimbabwe, from um southern part of from southern part of Africa. I came to the UK in 2004. And I, I settled here and, and I remember like growing up, I'd always wanted to be a lawyer. So when I came here, I was like going to, um, going to night school, trying to get into university to become a lawyer. And then in 2014, I found a lump in my right, right breast. I wasn't looking for it. Actually, I came out of the shower, went to put a moisturizer on and just passed my hand on my breast. And I just felt this thing that didn't quite feel right. Um, and I immediately went to the doctor because everybody talks about you find a lump, you go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. But I was only 36 at the time. So for me, it was not that I was thinking it's cancer. It's that's what you do. You find a lump, you don't mess about. So I went to the doctor just so that it could be checked out. Um, the doctor sent me to the hospital and they said, uh, you have to come in for a biopsy. So I had a biopsy and they said in 10 days time, you've got to come back for the results. Now in 10 days time, I distinctly remember it was the 11th of August, 2014. And the reason I remember is I had an interview that day. So remember I said I always wanted to become a lawyer. So I'd applied and the uni where I was supposed to study law, they had invited me for an interview at six o'clock in the afternoon. So because I was so convinced I couldn't possibly have cancer at my age, mm -hmm. I didn't cancel my interview because I was going to get the results of the biopsy and then drive to my interview. So the um, the appointment with the doctor was at three o'clock. So I walked in by myself. I didn't tell anybody I was going to the doctors. I didn't have anybody with me, sat down and I was told I had cancer. And because I wasn't prepared for it, I kind of behaved in a really weird way because I, I, I remember closing my eyes for a second and then opening my eyes and just like, okay, what do we do? But when the doctor started telling me about, you know, it's like the treatment uh, process that they were going to take, I just started gathering my things and I said, sorry, I need to go. I really need to go because I looked at my watch and I panicked. I was like, I need to leave. And the nurse was like, where are you going? And she followed me out of the room, actually. Oh, my gosh. I said, wow. where are you going? I said, I've got an appointment. I've got to go. And she said, I understand what has just happened to you. Are, are you? And I said, no, I do understand. I've got to drive to Manchester. And she's like, you're not even supposed to be driving. And I said, you know what? Today is not the day I'm going to talk about more mortality. I have to go. And I remember walking out, not walking out, a sachet out of this place. I was not crying. I did not miss a beat. I did not lose my cool. I got in my car. I drove to Manchester. I sat and I had my interview. And I remember one of the last questions that I was asked was, is there anything that may interfere with your study at the uni? And this is a question that they would, it, it's any, anybody would be asked. It, it, it's just like one of those generic questions that I ask everybody. But my answer was different because I then turned around and say, 
well, I've just been diagnosed with breast cancer. And the lady was like, when you say you've just been diagnosed, when are we talking about? And I was like, three hours ago. Mm. And she said, so why did you come? <sighs> and it was then, and I swear it was at that point that the answer came to me. And that answer has been so important to me because I always go back to that day every single time because I say to her, for a long time, I've wanted to do this. I've worked really hard to get into this room and do this interview. And mm. earlier on today, I received news that could possibly derail my dream. Now, cancer is only ever going to be allowed to be a chapter in my life. This is what's going to define me, not cancer. So I would like a chance to follow my dream. And mm. I was convinced when I left that I had lost to study at the uh, only to receive uh, an email the next day and I've, I've kept that email over the years saying that they've offered me a place to go and study at the college oh, and yeah. that was a moment for me absolutely everything that I had worked for I hadn't allowed anything to get in the way of the dream that I was going for um, and I walked out and I was just like you know what if I can do this I can do anything mm. and the 11th of August is a point where my life revolves because if I could do that on that day, I can do that any other day when it's nice and sunny. Wow. Amazing. Wow. That so incredible. Unreal. Yes. I got so, chills, but then this film doesn't have the <laughs> <laughs> But no. you know what? If it was a movie, it would have supposed to be like a happy ending and then I'll go and I'll get my, my law degree and then, but this is not the movies, this is real life. So yeah. when I started my treatment and I have two boys, I was a single parent, two boys, yeah. full-time job and studying, I'm not superwoman, one had to go. And for me, it was uni that had to go, I had to drop out. And because I had worked so hard and because I went back to that day when I had given this speech that was supposed to be the speech that was going to change my life, I felt I'd failed not only myself, but also my children. Like after going through all this, and I remember sitting there and saying, God, I have done everything. I've gone over and above the call of duty and mm -hmm. I still failed. So what am I? So I went into a bit of a depression and I just had days when I wouldn't even want to have a shower. And you know, it's like my kids were getting the brand of this because not only are you mentally struggling, but then even the way you interact with your kids and you know, it's like even cooking sometimes was a chore for me. And I knew because most of my family was still back in Africa and I was going through most of the, this journey mostly with just me and my kids. I mean, my younger son went to stay with his dad who was a really God sent my ex-husband to this day with two very good friends um was with me through that journey yeah. so he took my younger son my older son who was still was about 14 15 at the time was staying with me and he still had to go into school and and all this and it became like a really trying time for me and I could see myself not only pulling myself down but then pulling the people around me down mm -hmm. and I thought I can't do this you know I need to, to get myself better for my kids. So out of desperation, I started this thing that I called Lipstick and Heels. <laughs> lipstick and Heels was very simple. Love it. It was it's waking so up amazing. every single morning, put on, lipstick, put on a pair of heels and just start the day. And that was it. I didn't have another plan apart from, I'm gonna wake up in the morning, get dressed up, put on really good makeup on, put on a pair of heels, put in a really nice dress and start my day. And for some reason that started something in my head. Mm. I wasn't concentrating on the things that I couldn't change. I was concentrating on my makeup and my handbag, on my wigs, everything that I, I was in control of. And the things that I couldn't change suddenly be, took a back seat. But then what I realized was I became obsessed with trying to look like myself and not like mm. a cancer patient. So Cordelia was a cancer patient who would stay in bed and go for cancer treatment. Cody was this girl who just took the world by surprise, was by storm, go out, party, 
have a good time, spend time with my kids. I started having things, things that I used to call date nights, especially with my older son, where I would take him out. And because because he was becoming a man and I wanted him to become a gentleman, I would give him my card. So we'd go out, he would pull the chair for me, open doors, oh, and leave a nice. tea. Oh, oh, my God. God. So, would be like when he became a man and the way he would treat his future partner so that became my thing so this the, the lips and can hold and heels was impacting every bit of my life but in a really positive way so when my lashes fell out the first thing that happened was when people talk about you lose your hair mm -hmm. you assume it's the hair on your head so i'd made peace with that in fact i did something really out there so i'm um, I do like to play with my hair, but I'd never been really outrageous. But then one day I just decided my hair is going to go. So if I'm going to do something crazy, I'm going to do it now. So I went and shaved one side of my head and dyed the rest blonde. And I thought, if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go So I think that's what I did with my hair because I knew it was going to go anyway. And I thought, just hair is gonna come back but what i did not realize was my eyebrows were gonna fall out as well my eyelashes were gonna fall out as well wow. and it's like all the hair on your body was going to fall out but nobody had really told me that so my lashes really hard for me to take because i just constantly looked surprised and the other thing is because there's nothing to stop air and yes. dirt going into your eyes Suddenly, my eyes were streaming so i just started thinking i need to do something about my my missing lashes so when i went and bought mainstream lashes i found out that they attach or the rest on your existing lashes so it is a lot harder when you don't have lashes to wear false eyelashes so oh. at a time when you actually need false eyelashes the ones that you get are really hard to wear so for me, it then became an obsession. I wanted to wear false lashes and how was I going to do this? So I sat down and I thought, I'm gonna come up with an idea for a false lash for people who don't have their own lashes. Amazing. So then uh, nice. that's when my company wow. brought about C lash. Wow. And it's specifically for cancer patients, correct? So yeah, that is my story. <laughs> Specifically for pe cancer patients, absolutely. I mean, alopecia patients, uh, I, 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 alopecia sufferers you, do use sea lash as well because they've got the same problem. But then for me, I made sea lash specifically for people who've wow. lost their own lashes. Bravo to you. Nancy, all I can say is you are a true Wonder Woman, Cody. I'm going to call yeah. you Wonder Woman. That's your nickname. Woo! Yeah! You've, I was thinking I, oh, you've done so much. <laughs> I have a question for you. Um, pretty much how tell survivors out there and other people what you think they should do. I mean, mm -hmm. getting checked and stuff like that, because yeah. like you said, you went to a simple doctor's appointment and came home and it was like, wow. Mm -hmm. So what advice can you tell people out there that might not be going to doctors and stuff like that to go? Do you know what? I think for me, even I went to the doctors, but then I want to tell people because like fear is one of the things that stop people from doing a lot of things. And the first thing that we realize when we fear is we become insular. You, you want to deal with things by yourself. Let the world in because it's like you can't deal, especially if you're dealing with something like cancer, you can't deal with something like that by yourself. There has to be people who have to come in in your life and impact your life in a positive way, in different ways. And if you try and do this by yourself, it's going to be a really, really hard journey. Even though I did a lot of things right, one of the things that I didn't do was to get help and to ask people around me. Because what, what, you, what I learned too late was by trying to protect my kids and my family and my friends were trying to help me. I stopped them from healing because they would have healed by being in my life and heal and yeah. getting better with me. So I left them behind on my journey. So I was killing it, but they were not. My kids mostly, and I, if I could go back and do it over again, I would handle the situation with my kids a lot differently. I didn't tell them I was going through cancer because I thought I was protecting them. What I didn't know was kids are so yeah. 
or present, they knew I was going through something is wrong with mummy. Uh, they weren't stupid. And because I was trying to protect them and I was trying to hide that I was going through cancer, they didn't get the chance to have the conversation with me. And then when it came to people helping me, I'm, I'm a strong person, but you don't have to be strong in those times. Those are the times when you have to show people that sometimes strength is saying, please help me. I can't do this alone. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Yeah, amazing stuff. Um, I just have a quick question. You know, you said that you were depressed and you were, you know, I love the lipstick and heels. I think that is amazing. Were you ever angry, like super angry at, at cancer? Absolutely, absolutely. Because of the things that cancer stopped me from doing and mm -hmm. the the choices that it forced me to make. You know, it's like you lose. I'm a very feminine person. I, I, there's two sides to me. There's a side to me that's very like that wants to go out in the male world. I mean, I, I work my day job apart from a company is a, oh, wow. in a very male dominated industry. And I love that. But when I am when I'm when I am female, I am very, very female. I am, <laughs> I am lipstick and, I love that. And, very and, and all of that. And breast cancer takes away one of the things that is very female about a woman. And the first time I, when I, when I had a lumpectomy, because they didn't take away the whole breast, they took away part of the breast that had cancer. Unfortunately, you know, every woman has got a bigger breast and a smaller one my smaller breast is the one that got affected. So when they took away the lamp, it even became smaller. And I'd never wanted to look at it until one day um, my ex-husband took me to, to Liverpool to go and get a dress just to make myself feel. So I wanted like the most literary, the most ridiculously <laughs> female dress you could see with a train and everything. And I went into the changing room and I tried this dress on. And for the first time I saw this mangled piece of flesh and I just sat down and I cried my eyes out. And I just thought, why does this disease have to be like this? Why is it so brutal in its manifestation? Why can't you just walk away and win? You lose even when you win. And that was a moment of like pure anger. I was not happy. Um, wow. And and I, I've had moments like that, but that that is one moment that I absolutely remember because I can, just by thinking of it, I, I go back into that place and I just feel that anger starting to boil up because they, they are, there's things that cancer takes away from you that you can never get back. Wow, wow what a story. But yeah. I you know what, I mean, look what happens now. You're smiling and you're enjoying yeah. life, right? And you're and beautiful and inside and out, Cody. And, and you have a great company. Your company is really great. great, Cody. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I have days when I don't. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I have days when I don't even remember that I'm friends. I mean, you, you, you can get to the other side, and I think that's that's the other thing because cancer used to be a death sentence back in the day. You know, it's like in the sixties and seventies. We lost her for a bit. I, we're gonna probably try to get her back. Cody's in the UK, so she's across yeah. the pond. It's a far distance. I'm surprised. No, this is great. Yeah, we'll try to get her back. But her story yeah. is unbelievable. Talk yeah. about, wow. Um, anybody that is a, like, I, I, her nickname's the Wonder Woman. Yeah. I mean, what she's done and overcome and everything. And then her business alone. I mean, I'm going to... Uh, spread the word about that because that's giving the people across the whole country mm -hmm. and the whole world pretty much. Yeah, that is totally amazing. I think I wanted to ask her, it's too bad we can't talk to, to her again, is, you know, how developing that product kind of, you know, obviously I think if I, I mean, I can't, I'm not in her shoes, but it would help mm -hmm. me have a goal to keep going and to keep doing something that was important to me or to her, I should say, as a cancer survivor and passing that product on to make other women feel good. That's like, wow, she had an amazing story. Exactly. And I'm so excited. We'll have to catch up with her later. Yes. Some other time. Yeah. But, but this is just the kickoff of our whole day. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited here. I mean, what a story here. I can't wait to hear everybody's story because everybody's story is special, Nancy. That's yeah. why we're having this 
all day podcast, video podcast. So excited. I but am too. We will reach back out to Cody sometime soon. Yep. I'm going to shoot us off here. One thing we're going to do after every show, we won't do it after this show, but we're going to call it the Think Pink Punch. We're all going to get our fist up and do a punch at the end. All right. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Get it. Hey, thank you for everybody for joining in at 9 a.m. Eastern Central Time. We have, uh, I, I think Cody might be coming back here. Hold on. Oh, oh. oh hold on. Back? Oh, you know what? Woo. We just <laughs> made a sign off and look what Cody said. I'm the Wonder Woman. I'm making this happen. I'm coming. Yeah, back. look at that. <laughs> Love it. Uh, uh, I, you know what? My internet, because I live in such a remote area in the UK, uh, my internet is really dicey around here. So I've just been shouting at the kids to turn off everything that you see in the internet. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Mommy's got an important message to talk about today. Get off the that's, internet. That's <laughs> it. Cody, do you have any final thoughts for anybody out there on everything we talked about for a recap? Is yeah. there any final thoughts you want to give? Words of wisdom. Um, so I think words of wisdom is I I decided when I went through this uh, this whole process that I was never going to live a life less ordinary. And sometimes it takes something like this to get to that point. I mean, I, I finished my treatment in April and in June, I did my first 10K race for life. Uh, in wow. September, I did Tough Mudder. Yeah, in September, I did Tough Mudder. In <laughs> October or November, I climbed one of the highest mountains in Scotland. And I have gone on and I have done, you know, the things that I've been scared of doing in life. And then you realize that the only thing to fear in life is fear itself. And don't wait until something like cancer comes into your life so that you can yeah. live your best life. Yeah. People say that you only live once. You don't live once. You live every day. You only die once. So while you're here and while you're alive, just go out there. Do it. What's the worst that can happen? If you want to ask a question, if you want to ask a guy out, ask him. You can only say no. If you want to go out and do something, do it. Because you, you're not coming back this way again. Just do it. Wow. Powerful, powerful words of wisdom. Thank you so much, Cody. It's been such an honor to meet such an amazing woman like you. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you for and having you. me. You know you're our friend for life now. You can't get rid of us. We can yeah. be your friend no. for life. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you so much, Cody. Before we go, we're going. We, me, and Nancy already did it. The Think Pink Punch. Put your fist up. We're fighting cancer, right? Right. Think Pink. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Cody. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. The UK. We love them over in the UK. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.